On November 18th, SpaceX's Starship completed its awe-inspiring test, considered a major leap forward in its attempt to reach orbit. Following this success, the company will enter the preparation phase for NASA's Artemis III mission scheduled in December 2025, including testing in orbit, refueling, and operating the Starship Lunar Lander. According to NASA, SpaceX must complete at least 15 spacecraft launches. Thus, the space agency is also concerned that the amount of work needed to perfect the launch system and the high frequency of launches required for the program could delay the mission. Perhaps this prompted the space agency to find one more supplier, Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin, to develop a backup lunar lander. But is NASA's action necessary? Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. In 2020, NASA awarded contracts to three commercial teams, including SpaceX, Dynetics, and Blue Origin for the agency's human landing system. HLS program. They asked each of these companies to develop an innovative landing system to be used under the Artemis program to ferry astronauts down to the lunar surface. On April 16, NASA announced that SpaceX's Starship had beaten out the other two competitors, winning the $2.9 billion contract to build the Artemis lunar lander, the first lunar landing within the framework of the program, namely Artemis III, originally was set to happen by 2024, but now slipped into late 2025. To serve this mission, SpaceX has developed the Starship Lunar Lander, or Starship HLS, which has a length of 50 meters. Because it is designed not to re-enter the atmosphere, it has no heat shield or flight control surfaces. Thus, its weight will be significantly reduced and will only consume half the tank capacity in four tanks compared to eight on the normal version. The spacecraft will be powered by the super-powerful Raptor rocket engine and use liquid methane and liquid oxygen as a propellant. If you think $2.9 billion is too expensive for building a spacecraft ferrying astronauts to the moon, let's move on to SpaceX's competitor, Blue Origin. On 19th of May 2023, NASA announced the selection of Blue Origin under a $3.4 billion contract to build the second human landing system for the Artemis V mission to return to the Moon. Nominally, this landing of four astronauts will take place in 2029, but almost certainly the schedule will slip out into the early 2030s. The space company founded by Jeff Bezos is developing a fully reusable lander Blue Moon Mark II lander. In October 2023, Blue Origin unveiled a full-size mock-up of an uncrewed version of its Blue Moon lunar lander that will test technologies intended for a crewed version it is developing for NASA's Artemis effort. The crewed lander is 16 meters tall, shorter than SpaceX's HLS, and designed to fit inside the 7-meter payload fairing of Blue Origin's New Glenn rocket. It has a dry mass of 16 metric tons and more than 45 metric tons when filled with propellants. It will be powered by BE-7 engines powered by liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. After having an overview of both, it's time to answer the question, which one is better? The first is about the engine. Frankly, there aren't many details about the BE-7. Based on the little information we collected from the website of Blue Origin, BE-7 is an additively manufactured, high-performance, dual-expander cycle engine, generating 44.5 kilonewtons or 10,000 pounds of thrust. When looking at the image of BE-7, you can see that it resembles Raptor version 2 in its simple design style. Meanwhile, its predecessor, BE-4, has a similar thrust to SpaceX's Raptor version 2 and also uses methane and oxygen that will power the new Glenn rocket to launch a Blue Moon lander in the 2030s. But its chamber pressure at only 134 bar is half that of the Raptor V2. 
anyway, it is difficult to draw exact comments about both BO's engines, given that BE-7 is still on paper, and BE-4, although qualified for flight, has not yet joined any actual flight. The only thing we can confidently discuss here is about Starship's Raptor engine. The recently used version, Raptor 2, featured a force of 510,000 pounds each, much higher than the BE-7. Furthermore, this type of engine has been tested in real flights twice, especially in Starship IFT-02. All 33 Raptors V2 completed a full duration burn during Booster 9's ascent, and six second-stage engines helped ship 25 to reach outer space. This success promises to pave the way for Raptor's further development in the near future. For that reason, I will put my money on Raptor. Like the engines, SpaceX's vehicle is fully capable of surpassing the competition in terms of reliability. As you know, although Starship is still developing, at least it has been lifted off the ground twice and no kidding, its evolution rate is amazing. In contrast, the shape of the new Glenn rocket used to launch the Blue Moon remains a mystery to most people. Third, there is another key factor contributing to the success of the Artemis missions is cryofluid management, or CFM for short. An integral part of exploration systems for Earth-to-orbit transportation, human missions to the Moon and Mars, planetary exploration, and in-situ resource utilization, CFM is a term used to describe a suite of technologies that store, transfer, and measure ultra-cold fluids such as liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen, liquid methane, among others. SpaceX uses liquid methane, which, although has a lower specific impulse than liquid hydrogen, is easier to store due to its higher boiling point and density, as well as its lack of hydrogen embrittlement. On the other hand, Blue Origin uses liquid hydrogen, so the company faces a big challenge in storing this fuel. Hydrogen is very dangerous because it is a flammable, volatile, low-density fuel that leaks easily. To prevent it from boiling off, liquid hydrogen propellant must be kept at near-absolute zero temperatures. This is difficult enough on Earth but still more so in space where there are incredibly variable thermal conditions in and out of sunlight. Typically, rockets that use liquid hydrogen fuel in their upper stages must complete all their planned firings within a day or less before this fuel boils off. It's the reason why Blue Moon looks a little more conventional than SpaceX's massive Starship vehicle. It, nonetheless, will require an immense amount of technological development. Obviously, within the current context, Methane fuel is a safe choice for crewed missions. Last but not least, in terms of flight experience, SpaceX unquestionably stands out from the competition, giving the company many advantages in developing the technologies needed to serve Artemis, whereas Jeff Bezos's firm has yet to launch any vehicle into orbit. For example, SpaceX has successfully made the Dragon spacecraft reliable. Currently, it is the only vehicle for NASA's Commercial Crew Program, or CCP, for which the Dragon transports astronauts to and from the International Space Station. In Artemis III, SpaceX can draw on expertise from CCP, such as docking technology to develop a number of features including in-orbit raffling or docking to the Orion spacecraft. In short, in the four criteria, engine, rocket, fuel, and experience, Starship is better than Blue Moon in all. This partly explains why SpaceX can beat Blue Origin in the competition in 2021. However, NASA has its own motivations to launch a second procurement round in which Blue Moon was chosen as the second supplier. Most obviously, the space agency would get the competition it craves and prevent the danger of SpaceX monopolizing, which has proven to spur commercial growth. Perhaps more importantly, NASA is stepping into the future with this lander design. By selecting the revised Blue Moon concept, there are now two United States companies developing an in-space propellant depot capability and fully reusable vehicles to put humans on another world. In addition, if Blue Origin can make hydrogen a storable propellant with zero boil-off systems, 
America now not only unlock lunar resources, but the potential to open up things, such as nuclear thermal propulsion or other propulsion technologies that go beyond. Although we don't know if SpaceX or Blue Origin will ultimately succeed with these programs, both are developing spaceships that are radically different from the ultra-expensive, expendable means that humans used to reach the moon more than five decades ago. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson considers it an incredible moment in spaceflight history. Another interesting thing is that after a bitter defeat against SpaceX in 2021, Bezos not only returned with a new version of the moon lander, but also committed significant funding. According to it, Blue Origin's investment will be well north of the $3.4 billion NASA itself is paying for the contract. This represents another win for NASA. The space agency is leveraging the burgeoning commercial interest in the moon, as well as the spaceflight dreams of billionaires Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, to open the door to a potentially affordable and revolutionary new deep space exploration program. If all this works, NASA and its international partners are getting a spectacular deal. The combined development costs of Starship and Blue Moon will likely approach $20 billion. NASA is paying about one-third of that cost. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space-important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high-quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.